unconscionable that people who are accountable for the integrity of a process would first of all use outdated data to design that process. And secondly, to be able to use hyper-partisanship to separate this commissioner from her community is wrong and cannot be tolerated in the public policy process. Almost to the day, 59 years ago, right here in our great state of Georgia, the United States Supreme Court established the one person, one vote principle in its ruling regarding legislative redistricting. The case was Gray versus Sanders and the county in question was Fulton Justice. William D. O. Douglas wrote in the majority opinion, the concept of political equality can mean only one thing, one person, one vote. We have assembled today to discuss my efforts to, in collaboration with Commissioner Khadija Abdur Rahman to ensure the residents of Fulton County have political equality, which, as Justice Douglas articulated, can only mean one thing, one person, one vote. At the end of the day, Fulton County has home rule. And what that means to your viewing public, home rule means that we put the, together the map, we go through the steps with the state for the technical review and get it done that way. And it becomes much smoother process and you don't miss deadlines and it's not a lot of um, miscommunication. That's what I was saying. That is not what happened this time. What happened was I was excluded from the process. Now keep in mind, my commission district had the largest growth. The only other district was District 3. He was part of his process. I wasn't. You have a meeting with me one time in November and never come back to me for a meeting again. You know, you go silent, like they say, you go black, you go dark. And so I cannot say what evil lurks in the hearts of men, but I can tell you when you are disenfranchising an elected woman who's a county commissioner that represents almost 200,000 votes, then that is not a good thing. And more importantly, the state it falls to them, only we, we don't do our job. See, it's not the state's job to do our map. The job of the state is to make sure it meets technical review, that is done correctly with a deviation of less than 1%. The only map that Fulton County submitted to the state had 6% deviation. And so what I'm saying is, what does that tell the constituents when you leave someone out who's had the most population growth, when you don't follow the steps? We weren't supposed to vote on a map that had not went through technical review. That's code, that's law. We did that at the county. And so if we drop the ball at the county, our only other recourse is to come to the state. But hear me clear. It is not the state's responsibility. The state can do it and has to do it when we drop the bomb. But Fulton County has home rule. We were supposed to do it and we didn't do it. If current data is used, it will show that her district has the largest amount of growth, the largest amount of connectivity, and is accountable for the neighborhood, community, faith, and small business leaders having a seat at the table. This process that is currently used cuts her out of the process, cuts the neighborhood leaders out of the process, cuts the community leaders out of the process, cuts the faith leaders out of the process, and cuts the small business leaders out of the process. That's not democracy, that is tyranny. As you can see, the map splits neighborhoods in half and draws two commissioners into districts in which they don't even live among other transgressions. Fulton County Board of Commissioners has not submitted a map approved until this morning by the State Reapportionment Office, and it still has to go through other steps before it can pass and most likely will miss the deadline. It is purposely done, and it's purposely done 
by the two political parties who want to retain control. Those two political parties are clear that the way Georgia goes, the way the national election goes, and the way Fulton County goes dictates a big part of that. So this commissioner and this state representative are key players in what the people will do. And neither one of those are committed to the hyper-partisanship, the divisiveness, and control. And so those, the commissioner and the state representative, are viewed as outsiders. So a process has now been put in place to silence her once and for all. Well, I, I would tell the community to stay involved, okay? Don't wait for somebody to feed you misinformation. Call your local elected officials, call my office, call Misha Maynard's office. Make sure that you know about the process because what happens is the ones that benefit from you not having information is the ones that want to keep the misinformation out there. And those are the ones that want to demonize Representative Misha Maynard. And they can only do that with miscommunication, misinformation. We, as people who understand process and understand public engagement, we have to take this to the community. You're right, they don't know. They're just people going about their everyday lives. It is upon us to bring awareness to them and take this to them. So we're going to use roundtable discussions, community gatherings, summits, and conferences to get what you heard today out to them. That way they are empowered to speak up. And when community speaks up and it has the power of the Almighty standing behind it, then they can make a difference. This is a hyper media market in Metro. Nobody's more powerful in that media market than South Fulton.